Hello and welcome to Foundation Friday, April 20th, 2018. Steve Cypress here, Rhino of the Day. Is this cute little, I don't know, some kind of, maybe it's a clay. Uh, it's hard now, it's been fired, but it's a, uh, a cool little clay rhino, I believe it is. Kind of interesting, got a lot of character, just like entrepreneurs. You know, we come in all shapes and sizes, no two are the same. We don't line up all in a row perfectly. We're all doing our own thing. We have freedom and autonomy, and that's the way we like it. Matt is here, great seeing you. So today, you've heard the saying, winners never quit. Your dog is here, good seeing you. Actually, that's Jeremy Danley, who was the master marketer behind the contrived and created character of the comic, Jer Dog. Jeremy, good seeing you. And Karen is here, long time. We just spoke about an hour ago, great seeing you. And Matt says, hello, good seeing you. It's another beautiful spring day here. A little overcast. You can see a few clouds in the background. Those always add to the colors right around the sunset, which is happening off uh, to the west behind me here. And you might be seeing shortly some spectacular colors behind me as we lose the light around sunset. But anyway, so for today, you've heard this saying, I'm sure, winners never quit. I remember reading a book when I was a kid by Phil Pepe columnist for the New York Daily News called Winners Never Quit. It was full of all kinds of great sports. He was a sports columnist. All kinds of great stories. I was a big sports fan as a kid. And uh, it was all about, you know, oh, this guy got, you know, kicked off the team and then he came back and this guy was, you know, had a rough time, had a big injury. He came back and blah, blah, blah. Winners never quit. Well, wish I hadn't read that book or uh, hadn't uh, taken it to heart and kind of consumed it without counseling a mentor, a guide, a parent, who would have been in those days, or now as an adult, every business owner, of course, I'm hoping you have a coach, a consultant, a board of directors, mentors, all kinds of input, because uh, that is just completely wrong thinking, winners never quit, absolutely ridiculous. In fact, I'm sure every winner in that book that they told the story had quit all kinds of things because they were absolute champions in like one sport, which meant they were totally focused on it, which meant they had quit playing all other sports. Okay, so I knew a lot of, a bunch of really high level athletes and still do, but I remember as a kid, I had one good friend, Matt Lewis. Uh, we used to uh, mess around and play around together and uh, maybe Matt will chime in here and we'll see him, but uh, Matt was being groomed to be a star tennis player. It was one of those kids where the parents invested a heck of a lot of money and time and got him all the equipment and all the lessons and then would drive hours on end every weekend to tournaments all over the place and you know man was he good I mean you know no chance of like just hanging out and playing a little tennis <laughs> with him good luck to that but here's what happened Matt was not allowed to play any other sport he was not allowed to play baseball, soccer, football, basketball, anything else as far as a team. I mean, we could mess around when we were playing after school. Shoot, we shoot, shoot some hoops. But he was not allowed to play in any other sports team because he had to focus non, oh, nonstop only on tennis. And so basically he quit playing all those other sports. And so anyone you see as an athlete with few exceptions, right? Michael Jordan played pro basketball and then went to play pro baseball. So he quit pro basketball, but then he quit pro baseball, went back to pro basketball, won three more championships for a total of six and generally regarded as the greatest player of all time. And, uh, you know, Bo Jackson, he tried to play baseball and basketball together and Neon Dion Jackson uh, and all that kind of uh, Deion Sanders and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but for the most part, when you see a pro athlete or pro, you know, top business person, entrepreneur, anyone at the top of their game, they've quit so many things. And entrepreneurs, if you're a true entrepreneur, then you've got ADD and you're attracted to shiny objects and opportunities abound and left and right, you're always seeing something. And you're like, you know, maybe I want to do this instead and let's do that instead. And so there's an art to quitting. Okay, you don't want to quit, you know, you don't want to jump around and quit things too soon or quit because you're bored with them. These are all, when they're still working, I mean, these are all bad reasons. But we have to resist the urge for entrepreneurs. And I speak to entrepreneurs in these videos. So we are the 13% of Americans that employ the other 87%. We're different. The 87% be a whole different message. But for us, we have a tendency to bounce around and to quit way too soon. And even when something's working, we kind of get bored with it. 
And so we've got an ad that's running for a while. We're like, I think we'll just put up a new ad. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, ramp that down again. Talk to your coach, mentor, consultant, board of directors, whoever you have to guide you before you make a mistake like that. So there is an art to knowing when and how to quit and when and how to stick with something. But there is no blanket. Winners never quit. Stick with everything. Okay, because if, if you never quit, uh, you know, let's say you 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 place an ad, and the ad isn't working after a few days. Like, what do you say? Winners never quit. I'm going to continue to place it for another year, like as if it's a yellow page ad, and it just has to run for a year, even if it doesn't work. No, especially online now. You can do all kinds of stuff online, websites, online advertising that you can change constantly. You can split test 10 different, 20, 30 different versions. I, I have clients that do Facebook advertising. They'll put up 48 different versions of an ad for a client or 64 different versions. And then after a couple of days, they knock the 64 down to 40 and then down to 20 as if it's the, speaking of sports, like it's the college basketball tournament. They're paring it down till they'll get to the final, you know, it's a final four, but you know, final six or eight or whatever's working. And those are the ones they'll keep, and they'll add some more to test them. And so they're constantly changing. So they have to know when to quit running that ad and when to run a different one. We have to know when to stop that line of business or that product or service that we're selling or when to change the website or when to quit whatever it is we're doing so that we can do something that works better. See, that's the key. That's the right way to think about it. So... I started out by telling you I read this book and it was ingrained into me. Winners never quit, never quit. And so when I made the biggest mistake of my life, which was going straight from college into law school when I did not want to be a lawyer, no, nothing wrong with people are lawyers. I have clients that are lawyers. Karen as a husband was a lawyer. Like, lawyers, are, you know, it's great and it's all good, but it's not something I wanted to do. But uh, my best friend from high school got a top score on his law school admission test. And I said, well, gee, uh, you know, I'm as smart as him. I ought to be able to do that. Sure enough, I took it and I got in the 99th percentile. And I was like, gee, I guess I should go to law school because I have this aptitude for it. So what a dumb, <laughs> talk about being a dumb 22-year-old kid. I mean, that's how I made a decision to spend like a heck of a lot of money and three years of my life just by going like, I guess I should. Like, come on now. So I knew right away I didn't want to be a lawyer. And I should have quit the law school. But as soon as I used that word, I should quit, I was like, oh, no, you don't quit. Quitting is for losers. Winners don't quit. You know, I started it. I'm going to see it to the end. And there's all kinds of those sayings, you know, stick activity and see it to the end and see it through and don't be a wimp and don't quit. And like, no, see, when I recognized that that was not right for me, I when I used the word quit, I was averse to it. I was against it. I was like, I'm not going to quit. You'll see I'm tough. I'll stick it out. I look back, and it didn't take me long to look back, and if I had just chosen a different phrase and said, you know what, I'm not really going to quit, but if I discover something that's better, won't I be smart enough to move on to something better? Shouldn't I always move from something to something better? And if I looked at it that way, I would have looked at opportunities. I wouldn't have just quit and, you know, gone back and sleep in mom's basement and on daddy's couch and, you know, like kids do today and just kind of do nothing and quit but I would have looked for something better. And so I could have turned like a summer internship or a summer job after my first year of law school into in a career I wanted to do. And then said, I'm not going back to school because I'm not going back to something that is not as good as the track I'm on now. Instead of thinking, well, I gotta go back because I'm not gonna quit, which is how I thought. So there I was, uh, kind of lost three years of my life. I mean, uh, you know, I can read contracts and I can do crossword puzzles and I'm good at cocktail parties uh, for three years in law school that's all good and I can always get into the conversation of like how come you didn't want to be a lawyer I'm like that's, a, that's a, another uh, video for another day of like wrong question why would I want to be a lawyer I personally didn't want to um, but at the time I was very fond of saying that that was a waste of one-eighth of my life it was three years out of my life when I was 25 and the good news is that as every year passes or every day passes it becomes less and less a percentage of my life that I kind of, uh, I just say wasted, but I kind of, uh, you know, went off track there. And uh, opportunity cost, not only did I pay a lot of money for the law school, but what I could have been making and learning and moving up in a different career instead, oh, big mistake. All because 
I didn't understand the art of quitting, and I thought, you never quit. Yeah, maybe you never quit, but how about you always move on when you know there's something better? And that's today's foundational tip. Now, I see we got some questions, comments, concerns. Karen says, change course. Right, right. You know, there's another analogy. Let's say you're on a sailboat and you look at the wind and the storm. There's a storm ahead and you look at the weather charts and it says, hey, you know, you're heading right into the rocks in a storm and like, but I don't quit. You know, I'm heading in this direction and that's what we're going to do. Like, sure. So, you know, let me know if you survive hitting the rocks because you wouldn't quit. Right? Change course when it makes sense. Matt says, good stuff. Most people are prisoners to their current situation because they won't make a change. Right. But again, I'm not recording these videos. I'm not speaking to most people. In fact, I'm purposely ignoring the 87% of people that don't have enough courage to become entrepreneurs and don't have what it takes. But even, you're right, Matt, even these third, us, us 13%, the leaders of the world, without us, the world doesn't exist. Nothing happens. Nothing ever gets created, sold, bought. It, nobody gets employed without us. And even we sometimes can be prisoners to our current situation if we look at it the wrong way. That's what I'm trying to get through here with a couple examples of big mistakes I made. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes instead of learning from your own and not follow in the footsteps of those mistakes I made. Often I discuss successes I've had following those footsteps for sure. But um, that came from this stubborn, I mean, I'm as stubborn as they come, and I was stubborn to not quitting instead of saying I'm stubborn to always putting myself in the best possible position for the goals that I have and the future I want. And then, of course, I would not have gone to year two and three of law school when I didn't want to go and pretty much didn't go to any class and, you know, just said, oh, oh you know, what time is it? What month is it? You know, how soon to be done with this thing? Because I wouldn't quit. Big mistake. Uh, and there's Cherry Kane. Speaking of, there is Karen's husband, the attorney, Jerry Kane, who says, uh, lines in sand, not stone. Yeah, I think that was a, thank you, that's a little callback to a foundational video or a Wisdom Wednesday tip that I gave uh, maybe a couple weeks back, uh, maybe even just a week ago. Right, I remember that kind of recently, like, write your goals in stone but your plans in sand. Your plans can always change. It's an excellent point. If I would have looked at it that way, see, I was when I was 22, I didn't have a goal. I don't didn't know what I wanted to do. So four years in college delayed me entering the real world. So why not delay another three by going to law school and another advantage is not only was I delaying the real world for three years so I could just drink some more beer and hang out and do nothing, but my parents thought it was such a great thing. I could go home for Thanksgiving and, and they, oh, my mom is so proud. Oh, my son's in law school. I'm like, see, so even while I'm goofing off and doing nothing and wasting three years of my life, uh, I'm not getting any grief for it because the whole rest of the world thinks, oh, what a great thing. He's going and he's going to a really, I went to a really good school and, you know, look at that. He's really doing something. And so, of course, that made it a little worse when after I graduated and got my law degree and said I'm not going to be a lawyer, it's like, what are you talking about? What happened? Whoa, who, ha. All right, well, those three years plus the other four years and the other 12 years and all the years up till I was 25, which is when I started my first multi-million dollar business in my last year of law school, and that's when my entrepreneurial life and everything good in my life kind of took off and happened. It came when I decided to quit the wrong road I was on by thinking it not thinking of it not as quitting, but as moving on to get on the right track to where I wanted to go. Uh, and I saw, is there anything else here? Otherwise, I can see we're losing the light. Jim's here, Steve's here, everyone is here. Thanks for being here. Any other comments, of course, I'll read them and I'll respond uh, when appropriate. But we are losing the light, as you see the sun setting in the west. You see those lights in the background right around there. That, uh, I asked my beautiful wife, Michelle, that's a, some kind, I think it's a boys and girls club and they have all kinds of softball and soccer games at night there and so I'm like hey that's kind of cool you know I like to go over and watch the kids play and you know I'll, I'll watch any kind of sports you know when I'm driving down the road and there's a some kind of game going on sometimes I'll just stop the car and watch the kids play the game I'm still a sports fan at heart uh, anyway that's it for Foundation Friday hope you're having a fantastic one yourself and you have a great weekend Karen says gorgeous yes it really is great here isn't it Love the view. Highly recommend that you do not be trapped geographically if you're in a place you don't want to be. 
and you move to whatever it is to you is paradise. It has been another really tough winter to get through here with days like this every day for the last few months. A little sarcasm there, but I highly recommend it. Put together a business, get some help. If it isn't me, get somebody else, can help you put systems in place, get on the right track, uh, reach your goals, and have freedom and choice in your life, and live wherever you want, work with whomever you want, whenever you want, from wherever you want, I highly recommend it. That's a life I have carefully put together for myself by quitting being on the wrong track. That's it for Foundation Friday, and Matt says, uh, thanks, Steve. My pleasure. Thanks, for, Thank you. Thanks for being here and watching. Without you guys, uh, this would be pretty lonely, and I'd probably stop doing them pretty quick. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I've been here every day over the past year, speaking of which tomorrow. I'll be back with Success Story Saturday, which where I tell a story of a successful entrepreneur, and I'm catching a little bit of the last remaining light shining on me from the west as it sets over the mountains and behind the cactus. So uh, that's it for Foundation Friday. I hope to catch you back here tomorrow on Success Story Saturday. Thanks for being here today. Over and out.